Well, hello everybody. I hope you're doing well today. I'm going to show you one of my very favorite crock pot recipes. And what you're seeing here, this is my blog. I'm not very active on it anymore, but I used to be for several years. And this recipe was very popular on my blog. And anywhere I've taken this, people ask for the recipe. It's very, very good. It's called crock pot chicken and stuffing. Look at that. Doesn't that look so good? Comfort food for sure. And so you can scroll through this and get the whole recipe. I'll link the blog below. But like I said, I'm not real active on that anymore. But this is what I go back to when I want to make this recipe. I pretty much know it from memory because it is very, very simple. Let me show you the ingredients that you'll need. You need some chicken, boneless, skinless is what I'm using, and it's three to four large chicken breasts. I'm using two. Um, that's all I really need for my husband and me. I have actually even doubled this recipe before, so the bottom of my crock pot would be full of chicken. But for just the two of us, I'm gonna do these two chicken breasts, and then I'm gonna season those after I get them in the crock pot. And you can just use the seasonings of your choice, but you for sure want some salt and pepper, so what I'm going to do for the salt portion, I'm going to use the Trader Joe's onion salt, which I love so much. I'm going to use garlic salt. I'm going to sprinkle in a little rosemary for fun and plenty of black pepper. But if you just wanted to do salt and black pepper, that would be fine. And you also need cream of chicken soup, stuffing mix, sour cream, and I'm going to line my crock pot with one of my crock pot liners. This is the Kroger version. They work great. I use these probably more than any brand. And so the idea is, of course, you have your chicken, your cream of chicken soup, and your sour cream make the gravy, and then your topping is this delicious stuffing. Um, the original recipe, when you use three to four chicken breasts, calls for two boxes of the stuffing mix. I'm only using one because that's the portion that I need. This recipe is very adaptable to what you might need as far as portion size. And so I am going to get going and put this together. All right, for the original recipe calling for four chicken breasts, it calls for two cans of cream of chicken soup and it calls for two boxes of the stuffing mix. So although I am cutting the recipe down to only two large chicken breasts, I'm still gonna use two cans of the cream of chicken. We like plenty of gravy. so. You can adjust that according to you know, your thoughts on how much gravy you want to go with your chicken. So I'm gonna begin by adding the two cans of cream of chicken soup, the sour cream. It calls for eight ounces. I'm still gonna add about the same amount. Like I said, I like plenty of gravy. I'll be making mashed potatoes on the side, so that'll be great to go along top of the mashed potatoes. my chicken in the crock pot. It's got the seasonings all on top and I'm gonna go ahead and pour in the cream of chicken and sour cream mixture. All right, the cream of chicken and sour cream mixture is all on top and next we come in with the dry stuffing. All right, so everything is in the crock pot. I'm gonna put the lid on and this will go probably about three to four hours and you just kinda keep an eye on it. All right guys, I've just taken the lid off of my crock pot chicken and stuffing and I just kinda took my spoon and kinda went down into the chicken breast to kinda make sure they were tender, which they are. So I kinda broke them apart in there, kinda spooned a little bit of the gravy up over the dressing in a couple places. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. This is really 
a delicious meal. Of course, you can leave it just like it is and just scoop down in with a big spoon and get out a whole chicken breast or if you want to cut your chicken breast into pieces ahead of time, whatever you want to do. But I just kind of usually put mine in whole and then just kind of dip them out according to, you know, what you're hungry for that night, a whole one. Or you can just break off a piece of that chicken down in there with your spoon. Just make sure that you get some of that good gravy and dressing and it's great with mashed potatoes so you can spoon that over as well. All right, here's our plates for tonight. This is the chicken and stuffing. I have mashed potatoes with some of the stuffing and gravy on there. And these are the Margaret Holmes seasoned Italian green beans. Tonight, be sure and give this crock pot recipe a try. And a crock pot is a great tool in the summertime to keep from heating your house up. So that is another little trick. So try this crock pot dinner. It's a really good one. And we can't forget about these. I cooked up some yams sweetened with brown sugar and cinnamon. And that's what we had for dessert that rounded out this meal. up these four sirloin steaks that I showed you into oh I tried to be um, close in size on the size of cubes here so they would kind of cook evenly and so I used the garlic salt and onion powder and black pepper and then I came back in with a little more garlic powder so we are going to get these in the skillet. It's heating up. I'm going to do this in batches and then transfer it to the crock pot. All right, so here are the seasoned beef tips and I sliced up some white onion in there. And then I'm also going to put a little bit of Worcestershire sauce as this is frying. And then there are going to be some more seasonings and sauces in the beef tips once they get in the crock pot. But this is how they're looking right now. Okay, I'm getting ready to get the lid on these. I'm going to let them cook on low for, oh, they'll probably cook about three hours, give or take. I'll be here all day, so I'll be checking on them. I, um, you saw me cube these up. I batch fried them in the pan just so they could get a little bit of a crisp on them. And I sliced up some onion and I put a little Worcestershire in the pan as they were frying. Now to the crock pot, I've added in a little bit of red pepper. I keep it in this little cute little jar. And so I've put just a little bit. I don't want this to be too spicy. This is family night, so um, not everyone enjoys the same level of spice. So just a little. And then I sometimes think of when Rachel Ray used to talk about bottom of the jar recipes when um, I used to watch her on Food Network and what she would do is use just that had just a little bit in the bottom of the jar to get them out of the fridge so I had a little bit of hoisin sauce maybe a tablespoon and I had about a tablespoon of Trader Joe's Dijon mustard and so I put both of those into the beef here I put just a little water and with those in the jar shook the jar up 
and then pour them in. So I will let this cook and then I'll come back as it's closer to time to serve, maybe about an hour before, and I'll taste the sauce and see what it tastes like, see what I need to add. I've got two or three recipes I'm kind of following generally, and so I'll see what I need to add to that. So I'm gonna get the lid on and let this cook. All right, I have decided I'm gonna add just a little bit of these blackstrap molasses. This is super rich in flavor. It does not take much, but I feel like my beef tips need to be just a little more flavorful. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit of this, and then I'm also gonna add this au jus gravy mix. And I'm gonna let it cook a little bit longer. Wow, you guys, just by adding that molasses and the au jus gravy packet, the color of this changed. It's richer and deeper in color, and the smell is so intense. I added probably about a tablespoon of the blackstrap molasses and the packet of the au jus. I would have added brown gravy. There were several recipes I looked at that included a brown gravy packet, but I didn't have one, so the au jus is very similar. So. Yeah, so lid back on, cook it a little longer. I am just putting together this delicious salad, and I've just taken some help from the grocery store, and it's a bagged salad mix that I have in this bowl. You can see it's got some of the red uh, cabbage and the carrots through it. And on the top, I have sliced up some yellow pepper, some green pepper, and some cucumber. What I wanted to show you is my tip for cucumbers. This one happens to be an English cucumber. You can see that it is still in the little plastic sleeve that it comes in. But here's what I like to do. When I bring my cucumber home from the grocery store, sometimes you can slice up veggies and things and get them ready for snacking, but cucumbers I have found, they just get watery and soft too, too quick. So here's what I do. When I'm ready to use the cucumber, I slice up what I need. Now I take off the skin if it's one of the regular cucumbers that has the, the waxy skin on there. I just don't know if that's a great thing to eat. So I remove that. But these English ones, I leave the skin on. And then I slice off what I need. And what I don't need, I leave just like this. And I set this in my refrigerator just like this. I don't cover it. I don't do anything else to it. When I get it out, all I have to do is remove just a thin layer that's right on top because it'll kind of dry out and kind of be like a seal on this. And when I take that off, the rest of the cucumber is ready to roll. And I have found that, feels like to me, lengthens the life of my cucumber in the refrigerator. All right, check it out. Wow. This looks amazing. The meat is very, very tender. And I am not going to thicken up the sauce after all. Look at this. It's pretty thick already for what I was expecting anyway. So I think I'm good. So I have chopped up some red and yellow bell peppers and some green onions. And I think I'm just gonna put the peppers on top and let them just kind of sit on the top I don't really want them super soft, but I want them to soften a little bit. And then right before it's time to serve, I'm gonna put on the green onions. So let me put those on. There we go. Just gonna kind of throw those in there on the top. They will just really add some beautiful color. And peppers just go nicely with steak or beef tips. So I'm gonna leave those right there. I'm not gonna stir them in. And then like I said, before I serve, I'm gonna sprinkle the green onions on the top. All right, and in my big kettle, I am going to cook up some rice. I am just using the Great Value Long Grain. And I'm actually doing um, five cups of rice. It was one bag and about a half or so of another one. And I normally use my rice cooker, but I'm cooking up a large amount. 
So I'm gonna do it here the old fashioned way on the stove top. And how does that look all served up? The beef tips over rice, we served broccoli along on the side and the garden salad. It was so delicious. I hope you've enjoyed this video, just kind of a cook with me style, showing two meals that we had this week. If, if you, you haven't, haven't subscribed to my channel, I would absolutely love to have you. Stay tuned for the next one.